Hey, it's Chris, Luigi Games. This is going to be the start of something new. I call it Your Guide To. Meaning, there's a lot of games out there that have many iterations, many expansions, many versions. So, you know, you see plenty of reviews out there. Okay, here's a review, it's a great game, it gets a 7.5, it gets a 9. You know, here's a little gameplay. Well, that's fine. But sometimes, some of the most common questions I see are, where do I start in terms of what do I want to get if I'm looking at this? If I'm looking at this game that has four expansions, or hey, I'm only going to be playing with this player count, what should I get? So, this is my version of your guide to, in this case, Root. So, let's talk Root. You're, you're obviously interested in Root. The tagline being, a woodland game of might and right. Now, this is a highly asymmetric, take that, war game, designed and wrapped in a utsi cutsy bow that is deceptively complex. Now, with the latest expansions, being in the process of being created and funded and received, now is an apt time to say, as a person looking getting into Root in the first place, what do you need to know? What are some tidbits that are going to help you? And what's a good overview for determining what's the right path for you? Now, not necessarily in the gameplay sense, but in the what do I need for me to play it in my own setting? Now, the base game of Root is in something like its fifth or sixth printing right now. And over the various printings, there have been small tweaks, minor rule adjustments, and overall, the law of Root, as the in-depth rule book is known as, for delineating those minutia of differences that you need to know. The base game itself provides you with four starting woodland creatures. The Marquis de Cat, the Eerie, the Alliance, and the Vagabond. Originally, when this came out, also in 2018, from the first Kickstarter, there was the Riverfolk expansion as well. This added the Riverfolk Company and the Lizard Cult as two additional expansion asymmetric factions as well. It also added bot rules so that if you had less than the optimal player count, you could start to have that element to play against. Because this game, for the first two iterations of Kickstarter with expansion, followed by second Kickstarter with expansions, ultimately you could make a claim that the optimal player count was three, if not even four. Within that second Kickstarter, they also released the said Clockwork expansion, which increased the bot count by four, the Mechanical Marquee, the Electric Eerie, Automated Alliance, and the Vegabot. At the same time within that second Kickstarter, again, they added two more asymmetric, completely new, independent, factions to bring the total up to eight, including the Great Underground Duchy, as well as the Corvid Conspiracy. Now, on top of that, they also added two new maps for increased variability for those that were clamoring for new places to play. Now, there have been other smaller expansions, including a Vagabond Pact, which adds three new Vagabonds that you could be playing with to give some more variability to the original Vagabond in the base game. And now, this latest Kickstarter, with the Marauder expansion, bringing about Lord of the Hundreds, leader of the vast Horrier Wards, whose goal is nothing less than chaos and destruction, alongside the Keepers in Iron, who are trying to unearth and reclaim lost relics of the previous civilizations. This latest expansion also brings another new element to it of essentially mercenaries, or as the game calls them, hirelings, to give another factor that you need or can introduce. Now, the most interesting part about this last expansion that I will touch on right now, because I've already mentioned that the optimal player count is more three, if not four, as well as the bots now numbering up in the six or so of bots you can play against to get to that optimal number in the first place, even as a solo gamer, is that with this expansion, these are now more factions that are dedicated to an easier time playing with only two players, bringing the total number of factions that can do so up to an even five. Or odd five, because five is actually an odd number. But Does that sound good so far? Does that sound overwhelming so far? Does that sound like $200 to $230 
worth of game right now because, you know, it's probably looking at least that much if you got all of it. So, like I said, how does that help you? Which is going to be right for you? Where should you start? Well, obviously, the base game. The base game with those four factions that I mentioned at the beginning. And then it becomes a little bit more of a breakdown of what you are looking for in Root in the first place. As I mentioned just a second ago with the Marauder expansion, if you are looking for more of the non-bot, non-AI autonomous ability to play this game, the Marauder expansion becomes almost essential because otherwise you are left with essentially three factions to play as a two-player game. Then we can break things down a little bit further, but also in a slightly different way to help you sort of wrap your mind around it. Because each of these factions operates in a slightly different manner in how they are trying to achieve their objectives and how they are capable of achieving them in the first place. And why is this important? Because it's going to affect what enjoyment you have based on how you like to play and your own personal play style within this game because these various factions that I've mentioned do things very differently. And that therein is the gist of why this game is so difficult to play in the first place because when you are playing you not only need to know your tactic strategies and end game conditions but you need to also know the people that you're playing against as well so the more people you're playing against the more you have to be on your toes and aware do you like to expand and conquer and push other people under your thumb well then you're gonna like the marquis de cat or the Erie. Do you slowly like to spread your roots, no pun intended, and build up your resources and your strength until the tidal wave of your force crashes down on the opposing players? Then you are going to want the underground duchy or the lizard cult. Or perhaps you like to lurk in the shadows, waiting for that exact moment that exact blind spot or weakness to be revealed so you can strike true as an arrow. Then you want the Vagabond or perhaps the Riverfolk Company. Or perhaps <laughs> in a game with multiple people, you just want to watch things burn. Chaos is your middle name. So perhaps the Woodland Alliance or the Corvid Conspiracy is more up your alley. Or perhaps even the newly announced Lord of Hundreds. So, as you can see, that is where you start to divvy up what's important to you and allocate that in terms of which expansions become more necessary. Or are you just a solo gamer and you really want the base game with the Clockwork expansion so that you can have highly variable autonomous solo play, phrasing, against yourself. Now that we've looked at all the factions, let's break them down. Let's break down the expansions by what they contain so that you can have a little bit of a delineation now that we've given you an overview of the different play styles of the asymmetric factions in the first place. Let's take the base game for a second. You have two factions, the Eerie and the Marquis, that are more oppressive in nature. They rule with overt force. Then... You have the Woodland Alliance, which is sort of lurking from the shadows. The disruption-based, a little bit of chaos, a little bit of lurking, hidden, and that element. And then you have the Vagabond. The Vagabond who is playing all sides. The ultimate opportunist within Root. What are you looking at then? Let's take a look at the expansions. Now, I'm going to start with the Clockwork expansion because that is adding bots more bots as i mentioned previously to give more variety more appeal when you are at less than in theory the optimal or the perceived optimal player count of four and so it's adding a plethora of more from that aspect whether you're playing with one and three bots two and two three and one however you choose to do so and so if you are looking at that heavily where you want to have the full player count you want to have some more asymmetry in every single game and a full set of factions that becomes almost essential now that aside now let's take a look at the other three expansions we have the riverfolk we have the underground and we have 
the Marauder, so far. Because who knows what Leader Games has in store for us, let's be honest. The first, the River Folk. You have your River Folk, and you have your Lizard. Now, stepping back here a half second, all three of these expansions come with one commonality with the factions. All three expansions have a faction that is relatively similar in style, where the way that these factions work is that they spread slowly and amass their power that way, like a wave, slowly building and cresting until it becomes overwhelming. So, no matter which expansion, if you went with just one, you would be guaranteed to get at least one of this style of faction. Knowing that you are going to get one of those no matter what, then when it comes down to expansions, you should be looking at, okay, what is the other faction that is in the box? What else comes with that expansion? Now, with the Riverfolk, the commonality one is the Lizard Cult. The infiltrators, the slowly swelling presence where you are slowly trying to indoctrinate and sacrifice and build your strength that way. However, the opposite faction in that is the Riverfolk. And they are very akin to the Vagabond. So if you like someone who is playing all sides, who is able to interact and manipulate directly and openly because they are opportunistic merchants taking advantage the international arms dealers of the root system if you will if that appeals to you that is where you should head however the underground uses the underground duchy to use their tunnel system to emerge from the underground anywhere that they choose in order to sort of submit this chaos with their power and that is the slow spreading however the opposite one in that expansion is the Corvid Conspiracy. The Corvid Conspiracy, more akin to the Woodland Alliance. So if you prefer to be a little bit more Metal Gear Solid or stealthy, or you want a faction that is truly spy-driven, spreading your tentacles into everyone else's pies and getting a piece of them, the Corvid Conspiracy does so. And so if that appeals more to you than playing all sides openly, the underground expansion is much more appealing. Now let's take a look here for a second as well at the Marauder. The Marauder expansion again adds a faction to the more swell-driven factions, and that is Keepers in Iron. The difference here again is, let's say you prefer ruling with an Iron Fist, but you want more chaos, you want more destruction with it. You like Marquis, you like Eerie, but they don't go far enough. Then Marauder is probably going to be much more up your style. Now, we've talked about the factions. We've talked about the big elements that drive this game forward. But what else is there? Root, at the core, has a base deck of cards and abilities that you are using to your advantage with weaknesses and strengths on all sides. However, as you can imagine, you may get to the point where you want some variability to be thrown in there. And that is where the first of these other elements comes in. The Exiles and Partisans deck, which adds a whole new deck of abilities. With the thought being behind this, that it is giving you a new way to spice up the game at the core level without needing to necessarily have more factions, but then how you choose to use these factions with the different skills that you are now being presented with. The second way that you can customize this game is there is another Vagabond pack expansion altogether that adds that element of things to the base game without as much overhead, where you have three different Vagabonds that you can rotate in that disrupt in different ways. Probably the cheapest way to add another layer in addition to the deck changing to the base game alone, where nothing else is really needed and you can get as much bang for your buck out of the core as you would like. Assuming, of course, that you like the Vagabond faction in the first place. Variability within a faction itself. And now, we make our way to the next element. The most recent elements of the smaller nuances and caveats to the game that Leader Games has added. First up, we have hirelings. Mercenaries, if you will. These hirelings being able to be acquired by those looking to expand their reach, especially if they are at a place of disadvantage. 
and there are six being offered in the base set of hirelings, but an additional six for added variance and faction variability within each individual faction themselves. How are these going to work? How are these going to interact? How integrated, how necessary are they are? But they are another example of adding to the base game, adding a slight degree of complexity without needing to add a large degree of how the game actually is played or changed in the first place. But they offer you an opportunity to integrate a feature, potentially, with what it looks like of other people's factions or other factions even unused into your plans in the first place in some way. Going along with that is the Landmarks pack as well. These are modifiers already present in several of the boards in other ways like the Fairy on the lake map or the Tower on the mountain map and allow you to customize the individual maps even further as opposed to then affecting the factions as we've been talking about up until this point with those other additions. So again, some variability. Now, speaking of that, I have not even mentioned the other maps. Both of these maps that I just mentioned, the mountain map and the lake map are in the underworld expansion. So that becomes more of a priority if what you value and want is a different play area, not necessarily how you play directly. And so that brings the map total up to four because the core comes with the winter side as well for an advanced setup. Now, you may say then, okay, what is the equivalent with, say, the Marauder expansion if it is not offering a new map? It is offering factions that can be used at the lower player counts, especially of the two player count, now bringing the total factions that if you are a mainly two player driven board game group that you can now use more heavily with more rotation and variability without needing some of the other previously mentioned bot factions as well. Now, obviously that is designed for a competitive balance because I don't think anyone's going to make the argument that you could not use any two factions as the ones to go head to head, but when skill level is at a higher base, having factions that do not prey on particular weaknesses or that are going to be able to be more of a balanced playing field in general is a more enjoyable game. And so it gives you the ability to be more flexible there. Now, how does that sound? The next point that you need to know about Root is that this, although not commonly thought of like this, I would describe it in terms of group play as almost a lifestyle group play game. You think of that more commonly with the traditional dungeon crawl campaign style s games, but I think an argument needs to be made here as well with Root that that is very much the type of game that this game emphasizes and exponentially is enjoyed if it becomes that. And so is your group, is your close playing circle going to be okay with that? If for several weeks in a row or intermittently over several months in close proximity, playing the same game time after time, because that is where this game shines. This is not a one-off, put it away and play it again in three to six months. If you do, chances are more likely than not, this is not the game for you, for most people in that sense. You will always have exceptions. But for the most part, that is not where this game shines. If you do not like interaction, if you do not like take that, if you do not like multi-layered, variable, tactical maneuvering, with some strategy, with dudes on a map, this is not going to be a game for you. Because as I said at the beginning, this is not a simplistic move your guys around the map sort of game. This is a war game disguised as a kid's bedtime story game. The appearances of the animals are highly deceiving. And I think many a people have put this on their trade list because of these reasons that I've just mentioned. Okay, what do you think? The last point that you need to know is that this is an ongoing project. They have not said what else yet remains in the root lore. Will we see more expansions? Most likely. Will we see other variable iterations of packs and new additions to elements? Absolutely. 
But if you want to get it, there are copies out there, especially during the Kickstarter, if this really appeals to you. Because consistently, Leader Games offers whatever they are offering during the campaign for less than it will be at retail later. There's a better bundle on the Kickstarter than there will be at later times, period. That has been consistent. They have been transparent about that and very upfront. So if it interests you, those are quite often the best times to get at them. Okay, so there you go. That is your intro guide to what you should know quickly about Root. So what do you think? What is your experience with Root? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Do you like the fact that you, somebody else has the copy and you don't have to have one yourself? Let me know what you think. Also, as a first video in this series, did you like it? What would you like to see more of? What would you like to see less of? What should I do differently when I start to cover a few other games in this series? Let me know. I want your feedback because I want you to like what you're seeing in the first place. So, as always, thanks for checking things out. If you want to see more of this and you want to stay tuned to what else I'm going to be putting out there, throw me a sub. But either way, as always, have a great day. Stay classy. And maybe I'll see you around next time.